projects. Unlike the others, which were more to do with sustainability in terms of environmental and social issues, sustainability issues, this is more catering to consumers' religious beliefs. So this label has come out for beauty products and it's catering to the 1.5 billion Muslim consumers, which are mostly in Asia. And these products, which are certified, um, are made according to the religious beliefs of Muslims. They don't have any alcohol, don't have any gelatin, don't have any so-called contentious ingredients. So what's on the horizon? We've got more and more labels coming over from the food industry. We've got vegan society, but we're also seeing gluten-free products which don't have any wheat or gluten-based ingredients in their formulation. That's for consumers who have got a food allergy or a gluten allergy. You've got non-GMO, and actually that's the biggest, fastest growing label in North America for all types of products, not just beauty, but for food as well. Consumers in the USA want assurances that the products they buy do not have any genetically modified ingredients. This one here, I've picked out quite an interesting example. It's an Italian company, and they're marketing their products as locally produced cosmetics. And that could be a new label that's going to come out in the future. It's not just about buying natural organic, but it's about buying products which are locally produced and using locally sourced ingredients. And then you've got 1% for the planet. Now, that's not, it's not really a label. It's more of a company ethos that you're, uh, that you're donating 1% of, your of your profits to ethical causes or to charity. And that label is becoming more and more emergent on products in North America, but slowly here in Europe as well. In the second part, I want to look at the future. What do we expect to see in the coming years? The first thing is this trend of ethical labels is really coming from the food industry. The food industry is a lot more advanced in terms of sustainability and in terms of labels. You've got over 200 labels in the food industry representing some ethical attributes. The dominant label in the food industry is organic. Global sales have reached 80 billion US dollars and that's grown from about 25 billion US dollars uh, 10 years ago. Huge growth. Now the big differences that we have for the organic label for the food industry and the beauty industry is that for organic you've got a single standard, a single label in most parts of the world. In the European Union, we've got the e European Union organic leaf. You've got the USDA standard in USA, Brazil, Canada, Japan, China, they've all got a single standard for organic foods. We don't have that for natural and organic beauty products. There is no country apart from Australia which has introduced a standard for organic cosmetics. And this label is protected by law. So you cannot put an organic claim on any food products unless it meets those standards. Whereas in the personal care industry or the beauty industry, it's a free-for-all. Everyone is making claims. You don't have to get your product certified. You can make any claims, natural, organic, however you please. However, the key difference between the food industry and the beauty industry is that we're talking about agricultural products, typically you know, not involving chemistry, whereas in the beauty industry, as soon as you're talking about multiple ingredients, you're involving some level of chemistry, it becomes more complicated. So the same rules don't, sorry, the same rules don't apply. You know, it's very easy to get an apple, which is certified organic, or a biscuit, but when you're talking about skincare product and sun care products, it's a lot more different. This chart just shows you the huge growth of the organic food industry. It's grown from 15 billion US dollars to 80 billion US dollars and I think there's going to be a presentation this afternoon showing it's even reached higher than that in 2015. However, one of the problems we have in the food industry, we've got over 200 eco-labels. 
and we've got multiple organic labels too. Okay, you've got a single standard here in Europe, a single standard in USA, but one of the problems you have, you've got a lot of different standards. And it's very common in the food industry for organic foods to have multiple logos. That's the Soil Association logo of UK, AB of France, EU Eco Label, sorry, EU Organic Label, USDA Organic Label for USA. So that product is organic. The question is, why do you need four logos? And then you've got other products which are having logos like organic, vegetarian approved, and gluten free. This product here, the coffee, it's got four certifications. Two for organic, fair trade, and certified shade grown. Now, this trend is coming over from the food industry. How many labels do we really want on our products? And a wider question is, what impact is it having on consumers? You know, a, a product like this, it's organic, we get it. Why do you need to have four logos? Do we really need that? And the same trend is starting to emerge in the cosmetics industry. It's slowly taking off. If you walk around Vivinus today, you'll see more and more brands having two or more logos. This product here, Intelligent Nutrients, it's got three logos on there. Eco Beauty, launched by Oriflame a few years ago, certified EcoCert Natural, Fair Trade, Vegan Society, and the packaging is certified FSC. Now, is this the way this industry is going to evolve? Are brands going to wear labels as badges of honor? That's a question we need to ask ourselves. Firstly, you know, standards are important. You know, we've done some research on this, and um, I believe BDIH have done some research on this here in Germany. We did a study two years ago, um, sorry, three years ago now, it's two and a half years to be precise, and we did the same study 10 years ago, and we interviewed 100 buyers of natural and organic beauty products in the UK. We did face-to-face -face interviews with them, and what we asked them was, when you buy these products, do you look for any symbols and logos? When we did the study in 2007, 67% said no, 33% said yes, and when we did the study just over two and a half years ago, 43% said yes. So the trend is, more and more consumers are looking for labels. However, there's also an issue about mislabeling. Having a label on your product, it's great. You know, it's like saying we're meeting some third-party standards. We're conforming to some industry standard. But if you're trying to have an international presence, you're going to find instances like this. Products which are having false labels on them. Now, that's the CCOF organic logo. That's the Californian Certified Organic Farmers. This product is sold in Korea by one of the big beauty companies. The whole formulation is conventional. They've got certified organic aloe vera in their product and they put in a logo saying that the organic aloe vera is certified. Now, as a consumer, you're going to think the whole product is certified. This is also an example from Asia and this is actually the biggest pharmacy or the drugstore chain in Asia. It's the pharmacy chain A.S. Watson. They've got one organic extract in the formulation, certified blood orange from France, EcoCert certified. Just one ingredient, and they're putting that logo on the product. So that's the kind of mislabeling which is going on in this industry. So consumers, yes, they want certified products, but how do you prevent this? Especially if there's no regulations which is preventing this type of mislabeling or fraud in the industry. A wider issue is how important is certification to the success of brands? Here in Germany, the leading brands, Walida, Dr. Hauschka, Levera, they're all certified. If you go to UK, it's a different picture. If you go to USA, the leading brand is Aveda. They don't have any certified products. The leading brand across the 
across the border in France is Cordelier. The formulations are pure natural, but they don't have any certified products. So, rather than having multiple labels or certification, maybe product quality and transparency is the key. It's more important to be transparent to your consumers on what your formulations have, as opposed to going down the certification route. And long term, maybe the solution is going to be with mobile technology. Because there's only so much information you can put on your product pack. You can only put so many logos on. And you can't put in everything that your company is doing. But maybe the future is going to be this. And this is again a, a trend coming from the food industry. You've got QR codes. You can scan that and you can get as much information about your product or as little information as you want. This particular code tells you where the product was grown and which farm. You've got the Good Guide, a mobile app in the USA, which gives ratings in terms of health, environment, and society. So you can find out how clean the formulation is, who's produced it, and in terms of the social impact as well. And maybe this is going to be the future. As opposed to having more and more labels, maybe the future is going to be with mobile technology. And that's something for you to think about.